بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله something very important that we have to remember and benefit from is to attempt to fast the Sittim in Shawal six days of Shawal and we're going to read a hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam collected in Sahih Muslim in Abu Dawood with Tirmidhi with Ibn Majah and get some of the fawaid that Imam bin Uthaymeen Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned which can answer some of our questions that we may have with regards to fasting the six days of Shawal. One Abi Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam aqal Man sama Ramadan tu matba'ahu sitta min shawal kana kassayam ad-dahar ruahu muslim Abi Ayyub al-Ansari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Whoever fast Ramadan then follows it by six days from Shawal, it is if he fasted the whole year. In this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Imam bin Uthaymeen mentioned a few fawaid. The first thing he said, Fadilatu Ramadan Haith Nadab ila Sawm so Imam bin Uthameen rahimahullah ta'ala he mentioned from the benefits of uh, this is it shows that the the benefit of the holy month of Ramadan and the extra or nawafil or the extra uh, fasting which is similar, as the Sheikh mentions, to praying the Sunnans uh, prayers after you pray the Faridah, after you pray the Wajib. So, there's a likeness there that the Sheikh mentioned in that pray, uh, uh, fasting the six days of Shawal is, of course, like the extra reward that you would gain for praying during uh, after praying your farida after praying your five daily prayers so these are some great benefits this is extra reward you get from your lord subhanahu wa ta'ala and an extra way to come closer to him and an extra exercise for softening your hearts and as we know as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says كُتُبَ عَلَيْكَمْ سِيَامْ كَمَا كُتُبَ لَذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلَكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, uh, fasting has been prescribed for you, similar to the way it's been prescribed, it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you will gain taqwa. So these are exercises in taqwa, if you fast the sitta min shawab, and uh, any other extra fasting. Another benefit the Shaykh mentioned, he mentioned that it is recommended to fast the six days of Shawal and that from the uh, apparent meaning of the hadith is that there is no difference between fasting it consecutively or fasting it uh, with breaks in between meaning that you can fast that you could fast uh, uh, back to back six days straight Okay, starting from the second day of Shawal, because the first day of Shawal, of course, is what? Is Eid. And you can, uh, you can begin your fast, the second of Shawal, and you could fast that uh, the six consecutive days, right back to back. Or you could break that up. You could fast two days uh, in the first week, two days in the second week, two days in the third week, and then you've made Sittim and Shawal, or whatever is comfortable for you and easy for you to do. So the Sheikh mentioned as a faida that both of those are permissible and that there's in fact no difference. So this is the statement of Imam bin Uthameen, uh, Rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasiya. And another benefit he mentioned 
is that whoever fasts the sittim in shawal before they make their qada that they will not gain the benefit of fast in the Sittim and Shawal, in this case. What does this mean? This means that if, for example, you have uh, some days of Ramadan that you didn't fast, especially this is pertinent for the women, but perhaps someone traveled there for, amongst the men, he traveled or was sick, whatever the case may be, and you have to make up your fasting, you should fast and make qada, meaning make up your missed fast before you do the sittim in shawal. Or you will not attain that ajr, as bin uh mentioned. And along with this, the Sheikh mentions a, a particular mas'ala which is also beneficial for us. He said, if uh, a woman, for example, she had postpartum bleeding and she had to, uh, she was unable to fast all of Ramadan and then she became pure uh, on the day of Eid and after that she fasted uh, the sixth six days of Shawal or she fasted all of Shawal Wasama Shawal Kullu she fasted all of Shawal after that and then after it she fasted six days. He said the apparent meaning is that in this situation that she would get the ajr uh, of fasting the six days of shawal even though her fasting of those six days was outside of the shawal. And this is because she had an excuse, a legitimate excuse for not being able to uh, fast. And of course the ulama, or better yet to say that the ulama of Ahl Sunnah, the fuqaha, that they have difference in this uh, with regards to this issue. Some of them say no, that she would not gain the reward because she has to make that sitta, those six days of shawal, during uh, shawal. Because the Prophet ﷺ said, مَنْ سَمَى رَمَضَانْ ثُمَّ اتْبَعْهُ سِتَّ مِنْ شَوَالٍ then fast the sixth of Shawal. So it is restricted to Shawal. So some of the ulama have the view that no, the person would not gain it. Bin uh has his reasons and mentions with regards to this that because the person had a legitimate excuse, uh, the woman in this situation who had her postpartum bleeding that she would gain it if she fasted all of Shawal to make up for Ramadan and then she got the six she fasted six days after that and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah Azza wa Jal anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam